Good morning. Now it's time for us to get interactive here on the Joy News Channel. The show is live from digital address GA0992539 in Kokomemli Accra on DSTV channel 421 and GoTV channel 144. Our social media handles for Facebook, Twitter and Instagram is Joy News on TV. My name is Selinam Ampo. Now, fallen trees, billboards, and flooding in many parts of Accra, especially the Okonglo area of Madina Accra Highway, after rainfall mid morning Monday. The rains that lasted close to two hours left homes flooded as residents scooped out water from their homes. Some drivers who plied the Madina Accra Highway want something done to fix the portion of the road, which leaves some drivers having their engines and other car parts affected. Well, Komadum was out there and he filed this report. Same story, just a different day. Close to an hour of rains and some residents here at Asylum Down in Accra have their homes and shops submerged. This is a part of Accra, Asylum Down, around the Christian Methodist School to be precise, where anytime it rains, flood waters take over people's homes. And here in this compound, individuals are scooping flood waters out of their rooms, their properties essentially washed away. And as you can see in the background, a man in his mid-60s is attempting to clear out flood waters from this particular compound. Residents tell me this is a situation they have to endure anytime it rains. As many as 10 homes along this stretch were affected, these residents were helping themselves clear up the debris. Mauko has been living here for years and he tells Joy News they are tired of complaining. Oh, almost like 50 years now. So he's saying that anytime it rains, this area gets flooded. People have to scoop flood waters from their homes. Mini G solution for the flooding problem area. Okay. So he says um, the big drain uh, is unable to accommodate all the flood waters uh, anytime it rains, and that is why the water spills over and takes over people's homes and properties. <laughs> On the Medina Accra Highway around the Shangri-La Hotel, a fallen tree held up traffic for several minutes. Meanwhile, the Okonglo area was also flooded as always. Vehicles had to slow down considerably to be able to drive through the flood. And this is not a pole or the beach side, but this is the middle of a road. And drivers say or complain that this situation has existed for several years. And efforts to get authorities to fix this particular problem have yielded zero results and so you can see the vehicles whenever it rains this is what vehicles have to go through they wait through the flat waters here and sometimes it causes a lot of gridlock on this stretch these drivers want something done about the situation here before the worst happens yeah. How many years now? Oh, since I'm here, in, uh... This area flats every time, and small vehicles are unable to go through. Any time being able to be at the I had to be flat. Especially, yeah, you see a little, little cars, you say, Mattis in the morning, and you are crowned to me. So, I have a saloon cars in the morning to me for five years. When they are all sad, they are. It's been more than five years and sometimes the water gets into the engines of our cars. The flat here sometimes cause hours of congestion. This must be fixed. Wow. Well, on social media, many of you have been reacting to this. Let's take some comments. And we have Jim Fermenta who said they should build responsibly. Stacy Scott says the people clog up the drainage system. And also Elliot also comments they throw rubbish in gutters and they expect favor from nature. No way. And a book quick says you can't build a city without prioritizing an effective drainage system. All great cities have a network of tunnels. And Akote, very long 
comments. He says, I wish my humble suggestion is taken into consideration one day. Just demolish those houses and fit to be there. Dig those places as deep as well so that it can accumulate rainwater. Not all the gutters can carry the rainwater to the sea or lagoon. So let's just advise ourselves. Community works must be reinforced as well. Ghana is suffering. Check the Terminal 3. What will people say of us? And Abra, she says, we don't have the common sense to plan for anything apart from talking. We have seen floods after floods every rainy season, and we don't seem to have a clue to the end of this flooding. It is a shame. And Nana Somwa also says, can't we give Ghana to the white man for just five years to build for us? What are we, what are, what we are doing here? <laughs> Even in the next 400 years, there still wouldn't be any serious improvement. We, we are retrogressing instead of making progress. And Adam Mohammed says, it serves us right. Our leaders in Ghana prioritize unnecessary social interventions than focusing on looming disasters like this. No government officials will do anything about this matter. So let's just pray for ourselves. And Razik also says the bigger challenge is that we are just filthy. And Nana Kwame says this is really sad. Look at the trash in the streets. Ghana, we, we have to do better than this, I beg. Well, away from that, let's talk about the entertainment industry, a dent in the entertainment industry in Ghana. I believe that's how most of us feel after the VGMAs. And well, CEO of Chatterhouse, Theresa Ayo Ade, organizers of the Vodafone Ghana Music, I will say, she is disappointed at the conduct of the artists and adds that Stoneboy should have made them aware about the threats he received. Let's take a look at that interview. All the security plotters and arrangements and measures had been put in place. And so we were quite um, taken off guard with this new development as it um, occurred. Mm. There was some screening done, but obviously what um, showed um, us is that there was a clear breach mm. in the arrangements that were made. And um, these, were, these are things that we will need to um, review and put more stringent measures in place working closely with security authorities. Mm. Stoneboy was saying that you are receiving threats and all that. That did not that was not brought to our notice okay. as organizers. Okay. So if that had been formally presented to us as an I'm feeling insecure or I'm feeling um, threatened because I'm facing threats, I need you to provide extra security or be cognizant of this situation so you can prepare, then we would have made th those adequate measures and had that kind of briefing session with the police that, okay, this is what we need from you, but this is a, a threat that we need to look at. Okay. But we didn't, we were not mm. aware of um, some of these things, except what we see in social media all the time as in the, the so-called beef. Okay. Yeah, but if um, Stoneboy felt that threatened, he did not make it um, known no, to us no. as the organizers, because we would have made, put in extra measures to ensure that um, that threat was nullified, mm. but we were not made aware. So maybe that's what he means by the police were not aware of um, some of these things, oh, which right. we were also um, caught on the blind side. Mm. Well, you heard the CEO right there, but Ghanaian social media users believe that Chatterhouse could have done better. Here are some of the reactions from our social media pages. And Francis Kwame Bogsy says, Chatterhouse is a very incompetent organization that plays the lives of those at the event at a risk by not ensuring maximum security. They should be sued, banned, and fined for a while. And Samuel Abaka Mensa also says security at the place was very poor. How do you allow all those supporters to go on stage? Anything could have happened. And Eno tweets, Chatterhouse, I'm disappointed. How could you even allow people to carry weapons to the event? And in closed hall, seriously disappointed. Hashtag VGMA19, hashtag VGMA20. And at Kofi underscore Pebble says, Vodafone Ghana, if you guys 
We're still interested in the Ghana Music Tribe. Build just one auditorium for events. Then take your partnership from Charterhouse. They are not serious. And Miss Don Chichi says people could have died. Any punitive measures should reflect this. One day in, in the cell, it has to be established their credibility as gangsters. Stop treating drug addicts, lunatics with kids' gloves. Let the sanctions bite at Chatterhouse, at Vodafone Ghana. Take a compromise position and compromise VGMA. Well, let's take a short breather and we will be back after this. Welcome back from that short break. You're still watching Joy News Interactive. Now let's talk about football. Yes, because Asamoah Jan is trending. The Ghana striker Asamoah Jan has retired from international football after being removed as captain of the national team. Well, Asamoah Jan said he took the decision because coach Chris Yapia planned to deny him the opportunity to captain the Black Stars at the African Cup of Nations in Egypt next month. Here are some brilliant memories from the World Cup for some time back of Asamoah Jan. I'm sure we are going to miss him, so let's watch this. Well, that's hooked forward. Here's a chase for Gian. He's one on two. It is Gian. He's in the area. He scores! Ghana are back in front. A goal of individual brilliance from Asamoah Gian. Whether his departure is in good taste or bad, we will definitely miss him. Well, we have Oreku Ampo for a Joy Sports journalist on the line. We'll be talking about Samoajan. Hello, Oreku. Hello? Hello, Oreku. Well, we, have, well, we apologize for that little mishap and we'll get back to Oreku. But before that, let's hop on to social media to find out what people had to say about Asamoajan. Hook forward. Here's a chase for Gian. He's one on two. It is Gian. He's in the area. He scores. Ghana are back in front. A goal of individual brilliance from Samoa Gian. Well, on social media, here's what you guys had to say about Asamoajan. And Rudolf Mensah says, Ghana are back in front. A goal, ball, a goal of individual brilliance from Asamoajan. This is my fondest memory of you. Thank you for your service. You are a legend, Asamoajan. And Prophet T. Chirik from Pong says, Quick notice, Ghana Black Stars should be careful of Asamoajan's decision if Jan... Three will step foot in Egypt, then trust me, Ghana Black Stars will go far in the AFCON 2019 tournament. In the realm of the spirits, I saw the day are you injured, and this affected the Black Stars. 
And Kwamina Bello says, Asamwajan, thank you for your great sacrifices and superb services to our nation as a player and the captain. Every success in your future. And Felix Kwacheo Fosu says, Asamwajan has been treated shabbily. He deserves far more respect than he has been accorded for all his contributions to the Black Stars. No sound or logical reason has been advanced for stripping him of the captaincy of the Black Stars. And Daniel Datsi says, 21 Gan salutes to Asamwajan for this bold decision. After all his services, if this is how he, how the tactically inept Kwesi Afia wants to pay him back, then fine. And Albert Ababio says, the most interesting thing in all this is Jan Bruhaha is that people who had made the case for Jan to be dropped from the squad are now upset that he has retired from the team. Ghana have been, have been having a good laugh. And Chicha Brill says, that's exactly what Asamwajan wants to achieve. What has they done to merit a demotion? And Nana Kwame also tweets, this Asamajan retirement is taking a center stage this morning and getting us off the brawl between Stoneboy and Shatawali. And Kofi Kumi also tweets, is Asamajan worth the captaincy of the Black Stars or should he go? Hmm, Asem Sebe. And Omar Little says, I don't bab why Jan Vexo. It be like the same thing was done to the previous captain when he was named captain. So why he bore? And Capture says, see, Ghana, a journalist said that Kwesi appears decision to strip Jan of the captaincy is to enable him lead the Jama well. And Fifi Anaman says, with all due respect to Jan, the details of his retirement press release, the reason for his decision to rescue himself, gives him a bad look and soils his legacy unnecessarily. The tone of patronization and entitlement is unfortunate. Retire, yes, but do so with grace. Well, we'll be joined by Joy Sports journalist Oreku Ampo. Hello, Oreku. Hello. Hi, Solenam. How are you doing? Hi, Solenam. I'm amazing. Um, let me find out from you. Were you expecting Asamwajan to retire anytime soon? Well, yes, I would say so because, uh, you know, he has been playing the Black Stars for quite a long time and uh, it was not he could pass yet on in Egypt. So it was more or less like a farewell competition for him. A good chance to say goodbye. And I must say I am surprised that it did come right before the tournament. Mm. But fans have been bashing him for saying that it was they're saying that it's the same way he was made captain. Um are your concerns valid to Yeah I think so. The uh, extremely valid and if you would remember uh, he was made captain in 2013 and yeah. he had to be the standing captain in our game against Malawi and perhaps the fellow that the Black Stars was on mental and John Mental was faced out of the team um, whilst becoming general captain himself and so oh, Asamojan knows what the role of a general captain is and uh, that essentially means that your time is up and uh, you okay would have to wrap up our conversation the team. so i think it's more or less well unfortunately we'll have to wrap up our conversation on that because yeah our time is well spent but before we leave you we have to give you our video of the day 
While some parts of Accra are flooded, others are enjoying the floods. Well, that's all we have for you on today's Joy News Interactive with me, Selina Ampo. Join us tomorrow for more interesting stories. Goodbye.